He's in V fit. Max? Got it. Crap one up Epi. Charge D fib 200J. Is that the guy with tinnitus? His EKG was normal. We we're waiting on blood, but he was stable. Charged. Clear? Five. Resume compressions. EMS incoming. You need to take it, Arnold. Welcome back. Wow, that was a sneak peek at tonight's new episode of the hit series, Transplant. Now, the show follows an ER doctor as he adapts to life and work in Canada after arriving from his homeland of Syria. We're very honored to welcome back to The Social, the star of Transplant, Hamza Huck. Welcome back. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on the success of this series. Season two premiered last week. It was a very intense episode. Actually, most episodes are very intense, at least in some <laughs> parts. But let's talk about where we can find your character at the start of this new season. Well, um, for fans of the show and people who are up to date with everything that we were doing, we pick up seconds after the first season ended. Um, Dr. Bishop has just had a stroke and this uh, mysterious woman that bashed thought to have passed uh, has uh, come back into his life and we uh, we pick up right there. Wow. This must be a life-changing role for you, but you actually started work on the show in a very different capacity. This is such a great mm. story. Can you tell us about it? Yeah. So uh, initially, this is going back to 2018 now, 2017, something like <laughs> that. Um, I sat down with Joseph K, the creator of the show, and he just um, I was just hired as a character consultant. We'd, we'd previously worked on a show in which we built up a character from the ground up. And, um, you know, we were just talking about the immigrant experience and though uh, of the entire writing team and, uh, you know, and Joe, they put together this amazing think tank of Syrian consultants, like who, who can relate much more to the, um, to the refugee experience. They were just like, well, what is your experience as a, as a, you know, as just a brown man, a visible minority living in Canada, who's, uh, you know, what my day-to-day -day experiences are and, you know, just having a working relationship with them in the past. Um, there were just a few other things that I could add in just to uh, give a, a bit more uh, dimension to the character of Bashir. And then you ended up with the part. And then, I, I mean, we were about five minutes into the conversation when I was just like, hey, by the way, if you haven't cast it yet, I'll, uh, I'll throw my hand in the ring for that one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Incredible. you gotta you, you gotta shoot your shot, you know what I mean? Like, um, and then it, I mean, uh, you did it. You know? Yeah, exploded from there. I mean, it is a bona fide hit. It is airing around the world. There's been multiple Canadian Screen Awards, including one for your performance specifically. Uh, what does it mean to you to see this show so strong, strongly embraced by critics and fans around the world? Well, it just speaks to the, you know, the dedication of everybody who's worked on this show. You know, like, the, I mean, I could sit here, we'd spend the entire episode just uh, listing everybody who needs to be thanked for that but it's just you know so many so many hours went into making this show so many people had a hand in making it what it is and the fact that you know we set out to make uh, a universal story so the fact that it's been received so generously and so kindly by so many demographics all over the world kind of proves that that there's a there's a decent amount of success in in, in our mission so that that's uh, it's a great feeling Mm -hmm. And in addition to the gritty sort of medical aspects of the show, fans are very interested and invested in the characters, including potential romances. So your character Bash right? already had a fling with one colleague, but many viewers <laughs> are hoping he and fellow Dr. Mags um, get it on. Uh, there was a very long hug at the end of season one that had viewers <laughs> uh, shipping you to. Care to comment? <laughs> and what can you tell us? <laughs> um, there's a, you know, there's a... How do I do this? There's a, there's a, there, there's a genuine amount of tension, <laughs> obviously, right, right after... Right after this scene was filmed, it's, it's such a tender moment between the two of them. There's an undeniable ke uh, chemistry between them and sparks slew. And then the cliffhanger of the season was like, who's this mystery woman? Who is that? And, um, you know, it, it affects every aspect of Bash's life. So, um, you know, keep watching and you'll find out. That's about as much as I can say. 
It's <laughs> a good tease. Um, mm. Bash's story, of course, is fictional, but it has similarities with the experiences of, of so many immigrants. Canada, of course, is a nation of newcomers, and you yourself were originally from Saudi Arabia. And I think one of the criticisms we've often heard is that we're not great at recognizing the credentials of people from other countries. And that's part of what Bash deals with in transplant. So how do you mm. personally think we can better serve newcomers? I mean, like the, all anybody really needs, you know, there's this just just toxic narrative about people coming to Canada to, you know, take our jobs and take advantage of the system and stuff like that. And, and you know, it's just so it's just so negative when really all anybody wants to do is contribute as best they know how. And unless you take in their skills and their experience into consideration, they won't be able to do that. Um, you know, I, I don't know exactly how to make that make that better. But one thing that I can say is, uh, you know, last year I was, you know, I was given a, uh, the, the RBC, like top 25 immigrants of the year award. And that was, that was great. But what they did was it that year in the, in to honor all of the honorees, uh, they, they donated $50,000 to a group called the windmill micro lending corporation, or, or it was windmill micro lending. And they, and they set aside $50,000 to pay for the recertification of, uh, anybody who was a, a medical professional, um, uh, to, to get them recertified and be able to practice in Canada, especially with the advent of COVID and us being short of medical workers. I just thought that that was a, that was something that was tremendous. And, and I'm certain there are organizations uh, that do that for various fields all over Canada and all over the, you know, the global workforce. So I think that's one way that we could do, do better. Definitely. Wow. Now, um, you originally trained for the role by spending time shadowing doctors in a real operating room, but with everything that's happened in the past two years with COVID, do you now have an even greater appreciation for the work of medical staff? Absolutely. You know, there's this, uh, there's this folklore around doctors, especially, in, you know, in my communities and a lot, there, there's, you know, you know, they're these heroes and they know everything and, you know, now getting to spend time with them and getting to... Uh, you know, pretend or play at, you know, the very real lives of, of certain, you know, doctors and these characters. I mean, we draw from real life. And the fact that you see that these are all just people who make mistakes, they do, all they're doing is their best. You know, they're, they're not infallible. They're, you know, there's even a, there's a line later on, I'll give you a little bit of sneak peek in a later episode that, or actually, I think it just happened um, where Claire says it about Bishop that he's just another messy human being who's as right as he is wrong. And I can say that, you know what I mean? At meeting, meeting a couple doctors and knowing a, a few, uh, you know, friends and family who, who share that, uh, you know, with Dr. Bishop. But it's, it's sort of like this is a massive challenge, uh, you know, COVID and, and medicine in general. And the fact that it's on the shoulders of people who are just people like us. Um, that's the appreciation that I get because the thing that I'm realizing more and more is how little I can do this job and how grateful that I am that somebody spent the time and effort to learn how to do it um, to whatever capacity they can. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's, that's not something that should be scoffed at or, or um, undervalued to, by any means. Mm. Hamza, that was beautifully said. And thank you so much for joining us. And congratulations again on the success of the show. So everyone, Transplant airs Mondays, a.k.a. tonight at 10 p.m. on CTV. We'll be back right after the break.